in the last year and a half. And that's not to say they shouldn't have done it. So where is it you're thinking of buying? I'm looking in California around Temecula. I'm sorry, around where? Temecula. I couldn't get the name. Could you get it, Richard? It's Temecula. Temecula. I don't know where that is. Where is it's it? It's in Riverside County. Oh, Riverside. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. So I'm... The problem as well is that I, I live in a place where I can't afford to buy a home at the moment. So I have money to invest, but investing here is really not smart for me at the moment. So in terms of getting a mortgage down there, I've been told that I can't get a mortgage down there unless I actually have... Um, you need 35% down to buy down there. Yeah. Do you have 35% down? Yes. Have you done a good operational cash flow projection that tells you how much your rent's going to be and so on? Um, I've, I've done mortgage calculators and I've spoken to uh, more people in Canada, but I, I, I've just hit a wall. Bank of America won't lend money. They've had some changes recently, or I don't know how recent it is, but um, okay. in order for me to get any type of mortgage down there, I need to have employment authorization documents saying that I'm entitled to work. Well, that's there. not really true. There are mortgages being given to people with 35% down and lots of credit and I mean as I say I know a thousand people easily that have, I've talked to in the last year that have bought properties in the states right. and got mortgages and so on but it's getting tougher rather than easier and the reason is that everybody expects the properties mm -hmm. to keep on going down and they don't know how far they're going down okay. so when they're telling you they don't want to give you a mortgage they're telling you that even if you put 35% down, we're not sure that this place is going to be worth 65% a couple of years from now. And if you walk away, we're going to lose money. We don't want to do that. Right. Is that a fair statement? Well, I, they don't know what, what I'm looking at, but obviously in that area, that's probably what they're thinking. I asked if it was across the country, and they said, or across um, the state, and they said yes. Well, wait a minute. Can I ask the question? Why would you buy in Riverside County? Why, if you like real estate, why wouldn't you buy in Canada? Right. Where do you live? Um, I live in a resort town. Sorry. Resort town. Right. A resort town. Right. Okay. Um, so we're talking Whistler or something, are we? Yeah. Okay. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't invest in someplace else in Canada. You can buy a place in Abbotsford for the sake of argument. Uh, for maybe a one-bedroom condo instead of a three-bed. The problem is you go down. I had lunch with a fellow today that's 67 years old, uh, owns a house that's worth $6 million, and he was just talking about a place in Palm Springs you can get for two ninety nine, two hundred ninety nine thousand dollars $299,000. That's like a million-dollar house in Vancouver, yeah. right? Yeah. And you can go down to uh, Cape Coral, Florida right now and buy a place for $250,000. That's a million-dollar house in Vancouver or better. And I actually uh, was a key manager of a company Gulf, called Gulf American Land Corporation that took uh, Cape Coral, Florida from 220, 220 people to 220,000 people. And President Obama did his first stimulus speech from Cape Coral, Florida, and he did it. Do you know why he did it from there, Dan? Because Cape Coral was the foreclo foreclosure capital of the states. Oh, yeah. And you can buy a place down there where you yeah, I might mention just as if you if you like real estate and you don't have sufficient amount of capital, I mean there's always there's other ways to invest if you like the real estate sector for whatever, you can buy for example whether it's in Canada or the U.S. real estate income trusts. These are liquid securities which actually are listed on the exchange. Real estate backed. The real estate backed. They're professional companies. It'll benefit from if you think the real estate cycle will go continue. You can buy these types of investments REITs in the United States. Yeah. You can buy home builders. I mean, here's a here's a, a way some investors are looking at the re, the bullish investors in real estate are buying companies like, um, you know, some of the home builders, Toll Brothers, and some of these guys believing that the valuation of these uh, real estate companies is so low because of the beating they've had over the last two years that they're they're very good value because all the weak players in the real estate construction business have been basically bankrupted, so only the strong are left. And, and I see some purchasing going on in that sector by some smart institutions. I mean, they're not betting the farm on it, but they want a piece of real estate. But the, the, be the beauty of it for you is, as an investor, rather than being locked into a piece of land, which is relatively illiquid, you can own a piece of a security which owns the land or, or has condos or, or different types of real estate, 
and if you have an investment, say ten thousand dollars in it, and you want to reduce your investment, you can sell half. Yep. And very cheaply for minimal or next, very modest amounts of commissions relative to real estate commissions. So you can you can get exposure in real estate in different ways. It, you don't have to buy the physical stuff. Yeah. And, and I used Abbotsford as an example. You can go to a company called Lighthouse Realty in Abbotsford. Uh, Ross McDonald is my old business partner, but we have I have nothing to do with Lighthouse Realty today and never did have anything to do with Lighthouse Realty. And uh, they run rental pools and damage pools. You can buy a condominium uh, for... I'm not sure, likely the price of the house in Riverside, California. And you've got Canadian mortgages, Canadian stuff. You're in a place that the world expects, and I certainly expect the market to continue to do reasonably well in yeah. B.C. And um, you don't have management problems. You don't have to deal with me. Uh, Currency for risk. U.S. tax return, uh, California tax return. And California that's something that's worth highest. mentioning, David, is if you buy a piece of real estate in California. Yeah. Tax returns, right? Oh, California, U.S. federal yeah. tax returns. So when you and buy a piece down there, you have to file. Yeah, and California has the highest tax rate in North America right now. So you've got this, as I say, for nothing talking <laughs> by making the phone call, and we're not giving, not encouraging you. And I'm going to make another comment that people should not go to California, Florida, Las Vegas, or anywhere else and buy a piece of property if they don't already own one in Canada type of thing. It's, uh, if you're buying it down there only because that's you can afford to buy it, you shouldn't buy it. That's my opinion. Okay. Okay? If you send me an email to taxmanatcenta.com and remind me of this phone call, I'll send you a couple of e Have you Are you on my email list now? No, I'm not. Okay. I will send you a couple of emails... Uh, talking about uh, buying properties in California and Palm Springs and Phoenix, Arizona, and so on, and pointing out the pitfalls and the things and what you have to watch for. Um, but I can tell you that I've likely had 30 clients buy properties in California, Arizona, and Florida in the last two months. They are Canadians. They're buying them for investment purposes. They're putting 35% down, and they're getting mortgages without having a employment authorization to work in the States, no H-1, no TN, no L-1, no, no visa whatsoever. So if they told you that, they're doing it because they just think you don't have enough money and there's nothing to sue. If all your money goes down as a down payment on that place, you don't have anything left if its value goes down, right? Right. And if it sits empty for six months and you don't get $600 a month payments, can you afford to make the payments on it while it sits empty? So those are the things you've got to look at. The market, the real estate market in California is murderous, and it's going to get worse for the next two years. And if I did choose to do that, would I lose all of my benefits as being a first-time homeowner in Canada? No, because you bought a rental property in the States. Okay. Okay? All right. Thanks for your help. Okay. Now, you might also want to get hold of this book, which is Ozzy Jurok's book, and I've written a chapter on it on U.S. returns. And uh, or U.S. part, I think it's page 282 or something. Uh, you can get hold of it. I don't even have it for sale. You can get it hold of it at Ozzy Jurok's website at www.jurok.com, J-U-R-O-C-K. But if you're thinking about buying real estate, 55 real estate experts, including three Americans, uh, are talking about how to buy real estate, what to watch out for, et cetera, et cetera. It's a really good book. Okay. Well, really really good, good book. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your calling. Um, wish I had. I like giving people good news. <laughs> well, we were talking about foreign exchange, but yeah. again, so she's buying a hundred and fifty thousand dollar place with thirty five percent down. She's only talking about putting fifty thousand down, and dealing with fifty thousand sort of on the verge of what it might be worthwhile giving you a call. But let's go.